coaches maybe don't have a right or wrong, but they have to go with whatever they decide they're going to do. All right. Here we go into first Adam Castores. And about the same. Castores maybe even to the ball first. She was a bit faster to the ball, but the Akron player got a group to the ball as well, and she did scrum it away immediately. And we'll now see if she can get it. Yeah, she got it out there. And a quick pass downwards. Yeah, and no. immediately we see there um, three players of Akaren immediately rushing to the basket, taking as much space as possible. But Kostoris here, they know the game plan. The, uh, pre the forwards prevent um, the attack on the goalkeeper from ball because that's, that's, that's usually the best strength um, that Akaren has is they have those. Um, long arms, lo long leg players uh, that are very tall, quite strong. And there's, I think it's Van der there here who is under the, ba under the basket trying to um, break in, but she couldn't get quite get the grip on the goalkeeper there. That was a great steal there, but she ripped it away from a larger player. And now, midway across the pool. He gives the ball back up, and it's Akron coming back over again. Bad pass, but yeah, they get away with it. They got it. No, they lose it then. Oh. No. Pass it right into two, uh, two attackers on uh, one of your players. You should, you should keep the ball and at least uh, make body contact with one of the players before you pass the ball away to give your teammate the opportunity to uh, get a one-on-one. -on -one. Well, certainly you don't want to pass the ball, so there's a, a speed contest to see who's going to pick it up first. Yep. That's not good. Uh, but again, the pressure is coming. They've got a player on the left side. She gets the ball. Ah, it's this play talks for her, sorry. Uh, I confused them at this moment. So they're going to call pushing? Yeah, it's called pushing, yeah. And the goalkeeper's still lying there. She doesn't know yeah. that there's a free throw, but maybe they have instructions to stay down. Yeah, usually you stay down until you see the clear call of right, the Right, it's uh, your team. Referee. You um, don't want to be surprised yeah. by a stolen goal. So far we haven't seen Castores hold on to the ball. Yeah. So Akron here, uh, it's a free game plan to uh, attack them and pressure them as early as possible. Castores trying to establish uh, ball control here, but Akron is very close to the ball all the time, uh, usually not to get the chance actually to swim to the defense, but the defender is very well in place. And he's going out here to help the forwards um, regain the ball, scrumming it away, using the strength to the advantage uh, on the surface. And pa quick pass downwards, and already there's the count attack, and you see three players coming in. She's trying to stay between the people yeah. The so players passing on their way over. Yeah, that's, that's that's basically the only thing you can do if you have if you know that you're uh, uh, two on numbers one and numbers disadvantage yep. here. Yeah, don't give them the space to pass around. But Castoros uh, managed to regain the ball here, um, trying to get out of their own half. But uh, Akaren very close to the ball again, um, trying to pressure them in their own half. She did a good job of staying, not passing to a, a risky yeah. option, and now they've gotten over to the other side. So yeah. This is good for uh, uh, Castores, but now they lose yeah. the ball again. So th this will be the story of this match here. Is Castores going to be able to regain yeah. control of the ball and hold on to it? It's not over yet. Yeah. For Castores, it's most important. Uh, okay, there's a the call for the referee here. It's grabbing the mask and it's for Akaren. For Castores, the most important part is to get the ball into their own possession and get into the Norwegian half and pressure them for some time at their own basket, uh, tire them out, uh, make them uh, stay in their own half. If Akaren is on the advantage uh, for the most part of the game, they can play their game, they can have their pace, um, they can pressure them uh, into uh, playing the defense, but I think Castores is very well, very well prepared to do so. And they're, oh, there's a nice uh, under steal there under the basket. A nice position there, but she didn't quite catch the ball. Great response there by number two. Who's that? She... And there's another, another call by the referee. We can't really see. Yeah, can't find or do it. Actually. 
we have a sheet here with the yeah, teams, yeah. but it's the, the printing is tiny. So if you have to see about this, this there it is. <laughs> Actually, I interviewed her. Uh, she's very charming, happy to be here at the competition. Especially if you come from so far away, from like the the Ocas and the Casores do, they take the, all the time to travel here to Europe. They're not just here to play; they're here to win the competition. I mean, everybody is here to win, but for them, it's like they want to just want to do it. It's it's it World Championship and Champions Cup; those are the things they want to achieve. So one could question whether this is attacking the player without the the ball, but since both sides have contact, the referee just says, well, yeah. whatever. There's usually always a little bit of pushing on both sides, and if it's not very one-sided, then as a referee, you, you let them do it as much. As long as there's no real clear foul there. What's the call here? Timeout. Time out. White. That makes sense. Castores is the, the team that needs to sharpen their game. They have to maintain possession. They have not done that. They've had some good individual efforts. They've taken the ball. They're swimming. Yeah. But they're not holding on to it. Yeah. Akron in here, very clear game plan to get in there, uh, get a scrum around the basket, uh, pass the ball downwards to one of their key scoring players and then just push it in with their strength. Just overpower play, basically. And from what we've seen so far uh, today in, in the games, they, they, they most certainly have strength to do so. So the Castores have to be always on the lookout for this player's position on either right or left side of the basket to not give them uh, the edge of one or two seconds to be able to get a grip on the goalkeeper, to get those neck attacks, to get those attacks in the back. There, there, have been, there has been some pressure. Akron has had some scoring threats, Castores has had none. Yeah, and we see, there we see it again, players, they do after the pass, they don't go away, they, they keep the position uh, around the basket, uh, closing down the space for the defender, they usually can't move very well, uh, they force the attackers uh, to respond to their positioning, and try to create scoring opportunities there. And she's got one of the one, it's one of the reasons they don't have a player under the scrum is because they've put so much into forechecking. Yeah, but now here Castor is really struggling, and there was a pretty good opportunity to score, but she couldn't get quite get a grip on the ball. And now Castor is trying to break out, but already the players from Akron are putting a lot of pressure on, on to the forwards and, and to the defenders too keep them in their own half, they don't want to give them the fast break, they want the ball back right before the middle of the pool. It's a very unequal struggle there, uh, player yeah. who's... You, you can clearly see the difference in, in, in size. physical strength and size, yeah. Of course they have technique, they know how to hold on to the ball, but still, there it's it's an uneven S battle. Strength and size is always an advantage in another world rugby. You cannot underestimate it, actually. Yeah. Oh, sh okay. She's she no has fin. Yeah, she has. She lost a fin there. And I think you're not even allowed to play without a fin, yeah. but they're not calling it. So yeah, usually you have to get off the field right now. So the it's referees it's a a gave a break there. It's a complex situation because on the one hand you have to give advantage if you're uh, getting to the op opponent's half and having um, the chance to close up to, uh, to the basket. Uh, on the other hand, you're not allowed to be in the pool. Well, the, the, the yeah. rationale for not allowing players to play without a fin is that their kicks would be dangerous. Yeah. I think it's nonsense. Well, mm. you can always hurt people with kicks, but yeah. I if don't... If she, if she continues playing, then yes, it's actually dangerous. But if she's just doing the last pushes, uh, putting, passing the ball away, then yeah, it's not one in my point of view. And that's how the referee... It's, a, it. it's a kick with a heel, which yeah. is uh, dangerous, and that <coughs> is not dependent on the fin, it, in my opinion. Oh, she, she got it. She didn't see the ball there. That was uh, surprising. But again, we see Akaren having two, three, four players at the ball, scrumming them down, using the strength to 
keep them in possession. And they're covering the pass alternatives yeah. very well. And now for the first time, they go, but yeah, they... Yeah, but again, the defender, uh, the... They're right there. The already in place. It's costing them a lot of work to get even a few meters. Yeah. And it's especially exhausting because usually the players who are trying to get the ball across the field are those who just were on the water uh, defending. Because you can't exchange in, the, in those moments. You have to put the ball into the other side and then you usually exchange. And Akron here doing a very great job of pressuring them down. It's important to note that Castores must be very tough that they managed to beat Orcas. I think they played 2-2. Yeah. Two -two. Um, two in wins time. and two losses in their national series, but goal difference or whatever it was allowed Castortis mm -hmm. to become champions. So they're used to pressure. It's not as if they're mentally suspect. I don't think that's the, the issue. What we see right there is um, for Akran, they're playing extremely offensively, so they know they have the pressure. The goalkeeper is already getting into the position to uh, push herself away from the ball. Um, and start a quick counter attack now. There's a nice pass downwards, but no other players in the Oh, yeah, that now she's in, in position and she got the pressure on, on the goalkeeper, but she couldn't quite get in. Nice work there. The forward locked right, her up immediately. Right, two forwards lock her up, but then again, now they have to gain repossession underneath the basket. Akron actually stole away space underneath the basket, and now again, nice attack there. Now, quick pass, and she can put it actually in the corner. The forechecking of Castortis is uh, impressive, but yes. they're on the edge. Now that there's a call. It's borderline. Oh, it's holding. No, it's holding onto the basket back. Right? She pulled herself towards the basket. It could be unintentional. Sometimes it's unintentional. Some try to do it very sneakily to get a bit of an advantage. Something just by accident, you grab the grab one of the. Um, the goalies sometimes hold on to the basket. Yeah. There. Now on the surface, and she's tied up. This Ooh, is the first the opportunity they had, and opportunity for uh, Castores. But it, it was actually pretty well done here by the goalkeeper to it was sealed up quickly. The heels. Uh, was the goal was actually empty behind her. Great dive here by the Castortis player going over to the left side. Yet again, there's an easy thing. And there's Paul by the referee. Holding. Holding. Uh, People also <coughs> have talked about wonder if we could have a watch with a, a depth digital measurement recording to find out how long people are down and how deep they go. It's pretty hard to um, to do. I mean, if you have some kind of technical utilities to do so, it's um, probably easier, but it's, ver it's very tough um, to just do it from the outside. Because what we see right now is, I mean, some players actually have the number of fins, with which is helping us out a lot here, but it's already very, very difficult to to see the numbers on the head because all the bands and, and wraps around there right. are, are blocking the view. So I really appreciate uh, from a shot casting position to have the shirts with the numbers on them because you very easily identify the players there. Oh, it's, re it's if you really don't know them by the body language. It's really great already. to be able to see the, the numbers and we we just have to print up a sheet tomorrow that's bigger, larger that we could actually read. So. <laughs> yeah. Very very good by Castorius now. They're yeah now they're gaining they some. We can establish the game into the uh, to the side of Akron now, and Akron is now getting uh, pressure to their own goal. They don't have all the players in the forward position, so they have to stay on the defense. And uh, Casoras here trying to get into a position to score, but Akron so far doing a good job. Castoras has not really put a dramatic threat yeah. on the goal, but th at least they're ho maintaining possession, but and they're starting to swim around, which is the Tactic favored by Colombian teams. They're trying to get a numbers advantage just the bas at the basket. They are trying to, um, the fast passes are played, the Norwegians, but 
that's what they want. That's the situations that the Norwegians are looking for. They're trying to pressure them out away from the basket for uh, one or two more meters, and then they get the quick counter attack to the enemy basket. They swing all the way through the pool, but she didn't quite manage to get past the defender, and the defender, defender can push herself up the ball there. If she establishes body contact with the defender and she can pass the ball into the other side, into the other corner, and those two have to continue to score, that's actually one of the best chances you get. Somebody lost their fin holder on the bottom there. Yeah, but Castor is now applying more pressure to, to Akron. They're uh, closing on to the side of Akron more and more. Um, oh, a little knee to the head there. Every. Yeah, it's for called for Akaron. So Akaron will be... Oh, there's some lag perhaps in the sound and the picture. I don't know if... Free throw. Nice fake pass. And she continues around yeah, to the other side. Yeah, she actually grabbed the position of the defender there. So now a player is in a very nice position here on the left side of the basket, but they can't get the ball through the forwards of, of Pistorius. Doing a really good job there preventing the, those fast passes that um, Akron is used to. Um, it's pretty much the same style that Mulder plays. They're trying to have those very strong, very quick passes, even um, very close to the goal, but usually you just hand over the ball to other players um, and surprise them. <laughs> with there was an example for you right yeah. there. But she didn't see the ball coming down. That's one of the risks of, of, of shooting the ball so close to the basket. But I'm very, very well aware of the fact that they regain possession of the ball quite quickly, usually. They have strength advantage there, but they just can't seem to find the edge at the basket of Castores to get in there and score. And we see that at some point Castores manages to um, establish the game on the other side. It's now 12 seconds, so Castores can use all the forces to try to get to um, Novus basket. I think it was just strong the ball away and won't risk any um, scoring opportunities there for Castores. Yeah. That's the first half. <laughs> so, 0-0, zero, zero, Akron was a stronger team. Yes, but Akron clearly the dominant team, but we have to say very well done here by the Castores to defend uh, the strong attacks of the Norwegian women. Um, they couldn't really get the edge around the basket. Their positioning was sometimes a little out of place. They didn't uh, always see the player who was in the scoring position. Uh, the forwards of Castores did a really, really good job of preventing those long, sharp passes uh, into the corners on either the left side of the basket. Usually the game plan um, uh, of Akron is to, to use their size, to use the strength, to get a grip on the neck of the goalkeeper and pass the ball downwards. Forwards of Castores were looking for those situations. They were going onto these players, they were scrumming the ball away. They forced them back at least two or three meters from the, from the basket. So though their defenders could retake the positions underneath the basket. Um, yeah, we'll see how they can continue throughout the second half. We have uh, uh, approximately four minutes left before the start of the second half. It's hard to say how this game is going to end, but it looks <laughs> as if it's in favor of. It looks like it's in Akron. favor of Akron. Um, I think uh, the most dangerous situation for Castores is if Akron gets a fast break with more than two players and they can close the distance to the goal uh, without getting blocked by anyone on the backside. Um, that's usually what uh, Akron should be looking for. Um, mm. Those fast regains uh, of possession uh, close to the enemy basket and then shooting again in the three players. Get catching them by surprise. Usually most of the defenders are not as well placed then because they want to try to help their forwards and carry the ball um, to the other side. And those are the opportunities you can take to gain a good position underneath the basket and um, try to score uh, with a strong push from either side. So yeah, we'll see if um, they can establish those uh, types of gameplay. For Castores, uh, their game plan doesn't really change. They have to either get a quick counter attack against Akron, because what we've seen so far, Akron is uh, quite open actually at their own basket. So if they can get a fast break and they have only have one goalkeeper in place like they did uh, one or two times, they might actually get the opportunity to steal the basket away or uh, get underneath the goalkeeper if they're doing no. one or two people. So um, I think it could, it's very open from, from this point of view. Um, 
clearly Castorius uh, is being pressured to their own side, but they're doing a good job of defending. And I'm looking forward to the second half. It's a very nice game, it's very nice to watch. Um, it's clearly highlighted on the water rugby. I really appreciate to see those games. I think it's also very good for the female competition because they don't do not get those high competitive games uh, as often as the men Wh do. What do we have left uh, today? So uh, we have we still have um, games. Uh, today? No, no, it's the well, we have a lot of sheets of paper here, but maybe. We still have um, Disc versus Mamma Triton and Akron Mates team versus uh, Czech Butchubice at 9 and with 930. So also two quite interesting games. I think they are uh, quite equally leveled, I'd say. We'll see who can uh, take the advantage there. Akron, so that's the, <coughs> the men's team there. Yes. Berdovich. Need of caffeine? No, I've got my Coca-Cola. Yeah, and I shouldn't drink too much caffeine because I've got to sleep with Ben quite early tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the kitchen's closed. I'll see if I can get a cup of coffee yeah. so I can last the rest of these games. All right, Thomas, I, I went to get coffee, but I didn't get any, but I stood up, and uh, that woke me up a little bit. Uh, people are probably watching around the world, and it's 8.37 uh, here, according to the clock on the wall. All right, we're back into the second half, and Castoris and, and Akron pretty much reached the ball at the same time again, but Akron could get a nice quick pass there. Keep in mind that uh, Castorius must always swim more to compensate for the lack of size. Yes. So they'll either fall into a good rhythm or they'll start to get tired. Mm. Yeah, she drives the back up. A nice yeah. score. That was really nice. She yeah. passed the ball underneath the defender's back onto yeah. the other side. The defender was not able to close onto the other side as fast as possible. Attackers were most likely confused by, by the action and tried to get onto the right side of the basket. And I did sadly did not see who scored. But very nice play there. And those are the opportunities you really have to prevent if you're Castorius because those one, two seconds you have um, to score, those are crucial for, for Ackerman. If, they, if you give them the time uh, to apply pressure directly to um, the goalkeeper uh, to have no defender or forward in place, those are the moments they will seize and they will execute 99% of the time. So Very well done there actually by Ackerman. They, they perfectly seized uh, the start of the game to have the Pistorius defenders and forwards in the middle of the pool and close uh, the distance to the pool very, very fast. And then a few quick passes. And now Costello is really under pressure because now they have to get out the ball, to get the ball out of their own half. Yeah. And yeah, it's pushing by uh, onto the free throw goal by Akron and it's free throw for Costello. Yeah, now they really have to apply pressure. They have to keep in ball possession. They have to stay close to the basket because of what Akron is doing. They, as soon as they get one or two meters between the basket and the ball, the defenders will leave the space around the basket. Um, will try to help the forwards regain possession of the ball. Oh yeah, there was quite a sloppy pass there by Stoll's place, but they managed to regain the ball and they should now be able to close the dip. Oh, oh, 
Oh, here's a passing of Castoris, uh, sadly not as precise as the ones at Akron. They're doing a great job of um, ha always having a hand uh, or the entire body between the players. Oh, she oh. actually got a nice grip there at the next the cookie, and she stole the uh, the other one stole the basket away. And we'll see if they can actually close. Uh, this is not, but Akron seems to be regaining possession of the ball again. Yet again, two players on the counter attack, going straight for Castor's basket. But now clearly less pressure pr pr pressure for the for the uh, players here from um, Akron to get a quick score. They can seize the time. And basically they ha just have to have uh, have to keep the possession of the ball there. And tire out Castores and as if they get the opportunity to score, have an uh, overpower advantage at the basket, um, they will seize it. Castores now trying more actively to get away from uh, from the basket and uh, try to regain the ball, uh, which are exactly those opportunities Akron can seize to strike. And and very well done here by by the Norwegian players. You clearly see they're now slowing down the pace a bit, playing around the basket, drawing the forwards from uh, Castores away from the basket, uh, trying not to give them the opportunity to just snatch the ball away, using their numbers advantage, and then going in as soon as they... Um now there's a shift. Yeah, now there's not actually against the session. But she's got two so players on her attack, but two players. Very good forechecking by yeah. Akron. Ex we, we have to excellent forechecking by Akron here. They managed to get uh, repossession of the ball, I'd say, nice. two out of three times at least. And Castoris really struggled here to get a clear pass to, yeah. And again, the ball just drops down and Akron players picks it up. They're in position. You're always, what's very nice to watch is, and this is something you can teach your players as well. If you know you can handle the pressure of a team, don't be, don't ha have your body sh uh, face the opponent's basket because you are in the forward position and you can immediately strike to the goal. If you're in a defensive position and you have your head to your facing to your oh. own basket, and now there's a over nice the scoring opportunity over the basket, but Wait. the goalkeeper could change away, but now probably quick pass downwards. Yeah, yeah. and again the same procedure as well. Oh, that the defender is uh, clinching to her now and she's trying to wrestle the ball out. But two Akron players underneath the basket. Uh, Taking away the, the, the space there. <laughs> they survived this. That was not yeah, easy. Castorin doing a really good job of defending there. We have to be honest, those attacks of Akron really heavy. We've seen a lot of uh, teams uh, having huge trouble defending uh, at least against one wave of Akron and they're now defending two, three, four waves after another. So very well done here. They need to go like catch up. Yeah, but they have to score. They have to get off their own half. They need this fast break. They need a counter attack. Th their, their biggest problem is to keep possession of the ball for more than a couple of seconds because Akron's forechecking is just superb here. Akron's <coughs> got good timing. They close two players against one over and over. And it would be quite interesting to see tomorrow if the German women's team, who are very focused on keeping possession of the ball, can actually manage to uh, do their game plan against um, Akaren, or if Akaren is also overpowering, if they win, of course, um, the, the German team. Well, I think it looks pretty clear that Akaren should right now cruise Akeren through to win. Right now, Akaren is on a very good pace. They more and more they're actually um, gaining possession underneath the basket they, the defenders are not in place they can pass the ball around freely the forwards are really struggling to uh, regain the possession of the ball there or even um, just grapple the Akron players for a little bit now they get a little bit of breathing room they're having a free throw against Akron they have spread in the mask there
7.34 showing on the game clock. So by no means is it impossible for Castores to score, but we no. haven't seen that yeah, many good scoring attempts. They, for the bigger part now, they were lacking good scoring attempts. It was once or twice that actually a player got the grip of the neck of the goalkeeper. But Akaren doing a very good job here uh, defending against uh, those attacks from Castores and um, ball possession is clearly the biggest problem. Akaren using the size, using the strength to the advantage, they're using the long arms and so they can uh, keep up very easily with the Castores players and their forecheck checking is clearly um, on another level, we, we have to say that. They're very experienced. Thir yes. Average age of 38 years yeah. old. That means they've been playing a long time. So yeah. they really read the game well. That's why they can forecheck like that. They can judge the distances to catch up with the player. And the Castores players probably don't yeah. play against such large players very often. So it's a little bit surprising to yeah. them that they're getting tied up. Yeah. You need Not so well, they, they know it's a problem, but... Uh, Usually you need to have a game plan for two types of gameplay, either uh, fast, very fast and um, very um, air intense game or a very strength intense game. And Ekeren is basically doing both to customers right now. They're fast as well as strong and... Um, They're in, in their own league in, in that respect. In addition, in addition, using their size advantage. Now again, you see the scrums uh, away from the basket they are grabbing the ball going right up right into the basket having two three players position uh, on the left on the right side but now Castores could clear and the forwards but they regain possession of the ball pretty much every time they can draw it back out can go back and then again we see one player is having the ball two are already in position but yeah Okay, Stories has, has played discipline, yeah. tight defense, but uh, nonetheless they've let, they let in one goal, and it's likely to stay this way for the final six minutes if Akron doesn't score. Yes, and we see. But you never know. Castores might come up with something. They're trying to steal the goal. Yeah, they're trying to steal the goal there, but. Akron read the play. And the ball very bounces well to the bottom. They manage to recover. Yeah, it's again. H holding. Yeah, it's against Akron. But you see, the defenders are, are not in place by Akron. If you give them the space to get away from the basket and um, apply pressure uh, straight to uh, the Solos players, uh, three to four meters away from the basket. They will take the time, they will open up the space, but they will put the pressure onto the, not just brief, they will put the pressure onto the, on, onto the attacking team, on, on the, onto the Thoris. And so it's very, very tough for them. Oh, you're filming me <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very, very tough for them to um, actually get um, a clear path to the goal there. But now actually, Good chance for Castores to close in uh, onto the basket, but Norway just trying to clear They're coming the in from above. She's yeah. got a lot of guts to go for a big player like that. She doesn't have long arms, so she she's basically hand fighting her way to the goalie, but she couldn't yeah. do it. It's really tough if you're the smaller player um, and large player can stiff arm you away. There's barely any chance to get a good grip on the goalkeeper if you don't have the, the mom momentum of the surprise there. But again, really nice fast breaks there, and you can see the players, wow, pass, the players passing away the ball and not just uh, going up to brief, they're staying down there, going for double passes, triple passes, and clearing their way to the Castores basket as fast as they can, forcing them back into a very close and very tight defense. Oh, oh and very good. Oh, yeah. There there was. That was a block in the middle of the basket, and um, really nice scoring opportunity there. I think it was um, Shell. I think it was again um, Lisbeth Hawksworth, number six, as far as I can. Was see. it Barstow? No. Was it, was it six? The one number six, yeah. Elizabeth Hawksworth. Oh, 
Well, this game is yeah. pretty much concluded. Now it's really tough for Crystalis. They have basically not been able to leave their own half. Well, they, they haven't been able to solve the problem of ball possession, so that's not going to change now. Yeah. Nakarim will keep uh, applying the pressure um, as they have been for the last uh, good 22 minutes. And immediately when they uh, when they have the ball, they they go together. They're getting into into the corner, um, trying to keep possession into the lines. Akron forcing the defensive forwards to go for the ball because they have to reach the ball. They have to get the ball. They they need to leave their own side. And Akron uh, at this point, they they will not be closing in on the basket if they don't see the opportunity to do so. They ha don't have to brute force the way to the uh, Casillas basket. They can draw their their forwards out and force them to come to them. As you can see right there, they're almost playing three to four meters away from the basket. Um, but now the Castellos forwards actually managed to grab away the ball. But the defenders are so close to the basket that Akron can apply pressure with four look people. Look how she's kicking. She's yeah. pulling those two larger players with her for yeah, a meter and a half. Of course, that hasn't solved the problem, but tremendous effort here. Yes. But the big advantage of Akron here is that they have uh, three to four players immediately applying pressure to two forwards who are trying to bring the ball to the other side of the of the pool whilst the defenders have to swim those two to three extra meters but now a nice attempt there to reach the goalkeeper from above but well done here by the forward to prevent uh, her from reaching the, the goalkeeper and Castor is now trying to keep possession of the ball for a longer amount of time but as soon as they uh, go away from the basket more than two or three meters um, Akron here immediately applying pressure again with two to three forward players forcing them to the middle of the pool creating the space for, for the own to go out with the defenders as well and have those fast breaks to put counter attacks and we can see they're very very fast pace swimming here straight to the basket and very good opportunity there she couldn't quite get uh, the full uh, push onto the goalkeeper uh, but still in possession of the ball and trying for a second wave here but will pull out now with the ball getting the same position again forcing the forwards away from from their own basket opening up those um, those holes and then clearing out the basket but now very good fast break opportunity for Christoris two on two I think it's uh, it would have been two on one actually if they closed um, close faster we see the goalkeepers uh, just now right uh, the goalkeeper was going to the classic position here waiting for the defender but it's it, time's going to run out. Yeah. 38 seconds left. But it's just 38 Th seconds left for Castores and um, Castores will have to play for bronze tomorrow. Yeah. The fin finale is going to be Akron versus Duisburg tomorrow. Quite clearly, it's 24 seconds, and I don't think Castores will have the power to overcome the defense here if Akron really goes into a full tight uh, close Kicking. basket defense. Or is it? I think they pushing. Yeah, I think they will get one more free throw possibly. But then again, the time is uh, ticking out and uh, the game will be over because no, there's there the time doesn't stop for um, for fouls on Champions Cup. So it was a timeout called. I mean, they have five seconds now. They can try to have a small victory and uh, score one more goal within those five seconds. I don't think it's going to happen. Five seconds, yeah, not enough time. If Akuren is getting a timeout as well, so they're going to be fresh and ha have six fresh players in the water. They've got players on both sides of the goal. Interesting if they can execute, but... Uh, the problem is you need those players um, alongside the basket, but you also <laughs> need to reach <laughs> the basket <laughs> against Akuren, who are if the pa players are positioned alongside the goal, which just apply pressure to your forwards and not l uh, let them reach the basket when there's not a timeout by Blue Akuren. Just wanted to clear the situation. situation there. I think ah, there's someone in the penalty box. It was a two-minute penalty here for pushing them away from the from the empty basket. I think. If it if it were an empty basket, you could call f uh, a penalty shot as well. Uh, it depends if the ball if the ball is close to the basket. Yes. If the ball is not close to the basket, if there was no immediate scoring pressure onto the basket, you can only give a two-minute penalty. Um, but it w but it w in any case, it would still be 2-1, so yeah. it's, it's uh, academic. But it's still six, six seconds to go, and they have a 
once in the game scoring opportunity, let's call it like that. The game's... Yeah. They reset the clock a little bit there yeah, on, on your screen. Six so seconds to go. But you can see the four checking. That's it. Going straight for the ball, for the ball keeper and yeah. I think uh, the Castorius players, are, I'm sure they're not happy, but they, they can't say they didn't put up a fight. They fought. They put up a good fight against Akron, but uh, honestly, Akron here clearly the strong team. They used all of the advantages, they knew the strategy, they knew what they had to do uh, to win this game. They had the fast breaks needed, they positioned well up amongst the um, Castorius basket. And Castorius, quite frankly, not, be, not being able to get out of their own half for more than four to five times no. in this game. And really struggling to even keep possession of the ball uh, in the half of Akron shows us how dominant this game this year is. And I'm really looking forward to the game tomorrow between um, Akron and Duisburg now, who are both the final contenders here at Champions Cup. And from what I've seen so far, I think Akron is going to take it. But I, and we will see if the Germans can actually put up a good fight. Um, I'm sure they'll fight. They'll. Th it'll be a. They want to win it. That's. It'll easy. be tough, but uh, I would also pick Akron to win. Just as I, I'll go out on a limb and say that Orcus is going to win, but we'll see. The first uh, third place, ma place match is now um, Amago versus Orcus, right? Okay. So, if you talk about the third place match, um, Amago versus Orcus, they are basically going to have the same problem with Orcus. Um, Amago versus Castorius. Ah, uh, Castorius, sorry. Yep. Yeah. I'm so used to having Orcus <laughs> at the uh, Champions Cup. Yeah, versus Castorius. So um, I think they're going to have the same problem with... Um, they only have seven players. With, yeah, with Castorius as they did uh, with Germany today. They played an excellent first half, Amago. They only allowed one or two, two scores by the German women. Um, they defended for pretty much the entire first half um, on their own side. Um, giving away very little space to the German women. The German women actually s really struggled to um, apply their game plan to a mother. But I think Castores, um physically in very, very good shape. Um, they're also fast swimmers and they will play um, much stronger um, uh, around the um, Amago basket. So yeah, we'll see if they uh, can keep up with them or um, if uh, Castores can take their own power win. I think Castorius will win rather easily because they've got to be quite tired now after yeah. playing two games with just seven players today, yes. and they're going to go home. Well, so yeah, so it's it pretty heroic actually when you yeah. think about it. I've seen it before though; it, it it happens from time to time. A club will say we have seven players, or or maybe they have eight or nine, but suddenly there are injuries. And they've already paid; they've joined, and they don't back out. They come; they put up the best fight that they can. The Russians did it some years ago. I remember seeing them. Yeah. I if you have very skill, skilled players who can hold on to the ball, yes. do some strate there strategic there's stuff. There's basically one game plan if you're um, in an underpower situation, like I'm going to have one exchange play, score as quickly as you can, then keep possession of the ball for as long as you can. Do not give the opponents chances to close out to your basket. Um, keep the ball in your own ranks and breathe as much as you can whilst one player is coming on the surface. Mm. So, yeah, it's a play style a um, physically strong team can maybe pull off against some teams if you have some fast counter-attack players. But most of the time, uh, especially if the game time is longer than two times ten minutes, um, at some point um, stamina is going to kick in, um, your muscles are going to get sore, you're going to get tired, some people might, point. might be cranking up. Um, yeah. You're good. So finally, Thomas, we meet on the microphone. Yeah, finally we meet up. Uh, I was preparing the last year for this moment. <laughs> the entirety of the yes, last yes, year. Yes, I, I was, was, looking I was to. Medi meditating. <laughs> and, uh, I yeah. hope you're not meditating and thinking about me. That's not usually not that relaxing. No, no, no. I <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was uh, meditating about emptiness. 
You know, I, I, the, the best way to speak a lot is about thinking about nothing. Just relate what you see talk. into, yeah, talk, just talk. <laughs> that's, that's mostly.